If I was to train like an elite runner, how fast could I become? What is it about the way that they train that makes them so much faster than the rest of us? And what would it look like if an amateur runner like me was to train like them? Today we're talking about a training program that's been making headlines all around the world. It's known as the Norwegian method or double threshold training. You've probably heard of it in relation to athletes like Jakob Inge Britsen or triathletes like Gustav Eden and Christian Blumenfeld. But it's something that's being used by elite athletes all around the world. So I want to find out everything I can about this approach and see what, if anything, I can apply to my own training. Which is why I've got this and I'm about to take a blood sample on a park bench in the middle of London. Right, cut to me in the studio and I'll explain everything and then I'll see you back here later. At the core of the Norwegian method is a scientific approach that's testing blood lactate concentrations to find your lactate threshold. Now don't worry if that sounds confusing because I'm going to explain everything you need to know. When we run, our body breaks down glycogen, which you'll get from the carbohydrates that we consume, into energy and lactate is produced as a byproduct. At low to moderate intensities, the lactate is cleared effectively in the body. In fact, the oxygen that we breathe in can reconvert that lactate into energy to use in the muscle. However, as effort or duration increases, the lactate builds up at a rate exceeding the body's capacity to clear it. And that's the lactate threshold. Beyond your lactate threshold, it becomes really difficult to maintain the same pace and you naturally slow down. You probably recognize this feeling when you're running fast and you feel this burning heavy sensation in your legs. If you've ever experienced that, then you've probably gone beyond your lactate threshold. We have two lactate thresholds or lactate turn points. Lactate turn point one or LT1 is a pace that we can sustain for a few hours. For many of us, that will be about marathon pace. LT2 is something that we can sustain for maybe 30 to 45 minutes. And for a lot of us, that's going to be 5 to 10K pace. If we go beyond LT2, then the lactate builds up noticeably and we can't continue for very long. So when we're talking about lactate threshold training, we're talking about training just below LT2. Taking on threshold sessions will improve your body's capacity to use oxygen during a workout and to clear the lactate. Basically, you'll be able to run faster for longer. As you get fitter, the maximum pace you can sustain below your LT2 will increase. And that's something that can benefit you over whatever distance you're training for. Another great thing about threshold workouts is that while they're hard, they won't push you to exhaustion like you would in an all out interval session. They provide great training effect, but they don't leave you needing long recovery time. And that's what's so good about these workouts. It means you can recover really quickly and then go again. And that's what's key to these sessions. And that's why elite athletes are using them so frequently. So where did this come from? In the 1990s, training theory was debating the best ways to train to get faster. Norwegian runner turned doctor Marius Bakken was doing his own research and was also testing his own blood lactate. He did it thousands of times. And by doing this, he managed to find this perfect sweet spot of intensity that allowed him to train really hard and get faster, but also wasn't so intense that he couldn't recover from it. By tracking lactate, he found a metric that wasn't influenced by weather or other external factors. It was purely how he was feeling on that day. So he started experimenting on himself. He did long workouts, he did short intervals, he did multiple workouts in a day. And what he discovered was he could do two threshold sessions in one day and maximize his performance benefit and his training effect. Now this was different. Lots of athletes were doing double sessions in one day, but doing two workouts in a day, that was new. Other athletes started seeing this approach and they tried it for themselves. And what happened is it came to be called the Norwegian method or double threshold training. It's now one of the most popular training sessions for all runners of all distances all around the world. So to try and properly understand these concepts, I thought the best thing would be to come out here and try it for myself. So thresholds, fine. Double days, fine. But double threshold, this is something I've not done before. And today I've got one of these. So in between some of the reps, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna test my lactate concentration in my blood. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm working at the intensity that I wanna be working at. This morning, the plan is five by six minutes. So slightly longer reps. And then later, I'm gonna be doing 10 by 400 meters. And I wanna stay beneath LT2. So I'm gonna be working hard, but not too hard, hopefully. Let's run. So I'm aiming for around a 10K effort for the duration of these reps. Rep two, remember this is about effort. So this is not about pace. This is about the effort that my body feels. So running into a wind or running up a hill are gonna change the effort. So I'm like 20 to 30 seconds slower per kilometre than the first rep because of the wind. But I had to balance the effort and get that right. After the next rep, I'm gonna test my lactate. At LT1, the measurement should be around two millimole. 
per liter. The turn point for LT2 is around four millimole per liter. To make sure I'm working at the right level, I'll be using a portable lactate testing kit to track the concentration of lactate in my blood. Now these aren't cheap, but their accuracy makes them a must have for the elite athletes following Backen's principles. So I've just stopped and I've just tested my lactate after my third rep. It's 6.3. I'm gonna ease back a little bit because otherwise I'm not gonna get the training benefit that I want from this workout. So actually this is something really interesting for me to learn right now and that maybe I've been pushing my threshold sessions a little bit more than I should have been in the past. Now, if you don't have access to a lactate kit, then there are some other ways to find out how to stay within your threshold. You can book yourself in for a lactate threshold test at a lab, like at London South Bank University's Human Performance Centre, who kindly lent us a kit to use for this video. At the test, your lactate levels will be measured at different intensities, and you'll walk away with some personalised training frameworks to get the most out of your future workouts. You could use an online pace calculator, like V.O2 website, which will use a recent personal best to estimate and suggest paces for different workouts. You could use roughly your 10K pace, or if you've raced a marathon, then it's around 10 to 15 seconds per kilometer quicker than that. For me, I found that there's a particular heart rate where I'll be close to LT2. So if I'm running and see that number, I know I might need to slow down. Finally, Garmin users can be guided through a lactate threshold test on their watch, or your Connect app can give you some pacing estimates based on the performance condition of previous workouts. So the reason we do these workouts and take these short breaks is so that we can get our lactate up to LT2, take a very short break to get it down, let it reduce a little bit, and then work up again. And ideally, what happens is, over time, we're able to sort of lift that level of where the LT2 is for us. And we can run a little bit faster and with a little bit more intensity without crossing LT2. Ooh, so that's my run done. It was a good workout. I think I probably went a little bit too fast in some of those earlier reps. And that's the key in a threshold workout. I think you should always finish knowing that you could do a few more reps. It's time to get home, get some breakfast, have a shower, and then jump on a train and head into the office. I spent the day learning more about the Norwegian method lactate threshold training and considering what I could take from this approach. And on my way to taking on the second workout, I tapped into the wisdom of our resident expert, Andy. Today's a double threshold run for me. And I know that you've told me before that you would have done 12 runs in a week. So obviously you were doing doubles. Yeah. So can you tell me about what your, what your actual training was like? Yeah, never double threshold. So I don't envy you this. <laughs> um, I knew about this as a, as a philosophy, yeah. but my training during the week I needed so long to recover after my higher intensity workout. So I had three higher intensity workouts, an interval session, a threshold workout, and then a hills workout. Okay. And on those days, I would also then run in the evening, but I'd be running 30 minutes, very, very easy zone two recovery runs. So those were my double days, yeah. never two bouts of high intensity. And it would usually take me at least 48 hours to be able to go hard again. So okay. that's a massive difference in this philosophy. Yeah. I also didn't have any way of getting live data. So the lactate monitors that you're using didn't exist. I used to get my data from the lab and then go and take that out into real world running. Yeah. But then I also was lucky enough to have a physiologist who would come out and take lactate samples and heart rate monitoring <laughs> during my runs, my thresholds, to make sure I was getting them right. Yeah. But then I'd have to wait until afterwards to get that data back from the lab mm -hmm. and then adjust for the following week basically using heart rate to, to gauge my live pace. Shoe technology has massively changed in the last 10 years or so. And my struggle was just, my body felt so beaten up from high intensity. I couldn't have done back-to-back -back high intensity things uh, in the single day. Whereas now the foams, the different shoes and stuff, everyone's recovering so much quicker that actually to be competitive on the elite stage, you have to throw in a double threshold yeah. during the week. But I'm not saying to anyone watching this video, please go and do a double threshold. Actually, I think it's, it's too much for most runners yeah. and arguably unnecessary. So what can we do? Because we think threshold has these great performance benefits. Yeah. So, and it doesn't need to be done as a double. You can get all those benefits from a single. Yeah, and that's what I would have done. Like I said, I'd have broken it up into a progressive threshold, into threshold intervals with short recoveries. And just doing one concerted effort is enough for most people. And what you're doing is, I know you've talked about these lactate curves. So as you get progressively faster, the body starts to produce lactate and then you go beyond lactate threshold one, LT1 and then LT2. Basically you're trying to shift that whole curve to the right by getting fitter. So basically you're able to run faster for the same effort, the same heart rate, the same oxygen consumption, which means everything feels easier and you can ultimately race faster. So at the end of my warm up, I'm about to do 10 by 400 meters threshold 
Any bits of advice? The most me? important thing is don't overcook it. It's better to be too slow on a threshold workout than too fast. But also remember that double threshold days are only one thing that elites are doing to kind of innovate their training now. I can't wait for you maybe <laughs> to try out some of the others. And I'd love for you to put it in the comments what it is that you think we should try out from some of your favorite elites that you might have read about. Right, I've dropped Andy. Now it's time for me to get to work. 10 by 400 meter threshold. Let's go. So while I take on this workout, let's have a recap. Training like an elite athlete, following the Norwegian method and doing double threshold runs. What's it been like and what can it do for me? It may be an obvious point, but it's crucial to remember that amateur runners are not elite athletes. My heart rate was lower than I would want threshold to be. But I think the first one, you always need to get it right. It takes a while to get, like, get the feel for a rep. I want this 60 seconds to get my heart rate down and to get enough oxygen in to clear some of that lactate so that it doesn't build up and stack and stack and stack. Three, two, one. Doing double threshold every week would be an enormous ask for most, likely leading to exhaustion and injury. It's something you should only do if you're already really comfortable running workouts and doing quite high weekly mileage. Our training needs and objectives differ significantly from the elites. We don't have the support systems and resources that facilitate their training approaches. I feel like the heart rate was probably better, kind of more where I expect it to be. Should we take the test after the next one and see if I'm actually running in the right zone or whether I'm just just running around the park. Three, two, one. But at the same time, there are elements of the method that we can take on board. Elite runners train with a specific purpose for every run that they do, which is a principle applicable to all levels. And threshold runs, whether done as a double or just as a single threshold session once a week, have proven to be very effective for improving speed endurance. It also uses a data-driven approach to training, which can enhance your workout as you're using objective measurements instead of subjective ones like effort. So what I want to see is ideally between two and four. So it's 4.2, which is probably slightly high, but I felt like I was maybe running a little bit harder than I wanted to on that final rep. So I'm just going to make sure that I make, I'm just going to make sure that my effort is a bit more controlled on these next couple, because I don't want it going much higher than 4.2 because I'm not going to get the right training benefit from it. Regular lactate testing is intensive and may be impractical. But moving forwards, you could refine your training by being stricter when monitoring the more accessible metrics like heart rate and pace. The elite athletes train within strictly controlled training zones, and that's definitely something we can all do too. So if you aren't already, try introducing threshold runs into your training. They make you more efficient at utilizing oxygen, which can help you to run faster for longer. So compared to this morning, I'm actually finding this workout a bit harder, strangely. And it's not necessarily because the running is harder or more intense, because I'm running at what should be the same pace. I'm finding the control element of it a little bit harder. So I'm finding getting to the pace that I want to be at a little bit more challenging. And then I'm finding myself speeding up too much or slowing down too much. So I'm having to be really sort of thoughtful of the exact effort that I'm trying to put in here. So 400 meter reps are something I'm much more familiar with doing on the track, sort of all out, as opposed to like a more controlled threshold pace. I love watching what elite athletes do and trying to take some of what they do and put it into my training to see what of it could benefit me. Threshold, 100% benefits me. I think double runs as well is something that works for me. Double threshold might be a little bit too much, but we'll see. Maybe in the future, you'll see me doing double thresholds around a park more often. And every runner, no matter speed or goals, can benefit from training smarter, that's for sure. Do you do threshold runs in your training? What about double threshold? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. And before you go, check out this video with Tom and Andy looking at the different paces that you might run in a week.